Welcome back. So, in previous uh, lecture, we discussed uh, briefly about the interior of earth and then we also talked about the isostasy and uh, how the, the plates, different plates that is continental plate and the uh, oceanic plate uh, will be floating on the surface with respect to one another that is they are floating buoyantly um, in the asthenosphere. So, uh, we also looked at that the continental plate will be uh, sitting quite higher as compared to the oceanic plate and the continental plate will have deeper roots because the they are comparatively lighter with uh, respect to uh, the oceanic plate. Now, uh, moving further uh, uh, into the details of plate tectonics as I told that I will be bit quicker in this, but of course, uh, the slides which we will be providing you will help you in understanding the overall process. And this part is important as I told in the beginning, because this we are looking on the global scale, the tectonic activity on the global scale. So, coming to the plate tectonics, before getting into the details, of course, the plate tectonics uh, and the continental drifts has resulted into uh, the overall globe or you can say the earth surface, it has sculptured the earth surface in different forms and some of the, uh, the facts which we would say that they are definitely related to the, uh, the plate tectonic movements. These facts are related to the, the most elevated portion on the surface and the most deepest one. Along with that, if you look at uh, the few uh, important points that we should remember is that the age of the earth is almost like 4.5 to 4.6 billion years uh, and this was been gathered based on the uh, uranium thorium dating, uh, the radiometric dating and the overall continents, Okay, either you talk about the the continental plates or oceanic plate and the distribution of the continents is about 30 percent and the oceanic basin is almost 70 percent. So, what we learn here is that most of the earth's surface has been covered by your oceanic basins or ocean basin. Then we also talk about the climate change, of course, this is related to that the sea level changes have occurred through the time and uh, have resulted into the fluctuations of the glacial uh, uh, regions or maybe you can say the glacial limits. And the prominent features uh, which you see because of the, uh, the plate tectonics is the linear mountain belts, circum Pacific belt and alpine belt of Himalayas usually as uh, been uh, the most uh, prominent one on the continent. The highest point on the earth is the Mount Everest. The height is almost around 8850 meters, whereas the prominent feature of the ocean. Then we have the ocean ridges, ridge system, which continues for almost 65,000 kilometers. And the lowest point on the earth is the Mariana Trench uh, with a depth of about 11,035 meters. So, we have uh, like the, the landscape which has been uh, formed uh, on this globe because of the plate moments and, and then we have the, the highest point on the surface and the deepest one in the ocean. So, with this if we uh, look into the further detail that uh, this person was the first uh, to talk about the continental drift okay. and at that time not many scientists believed what he is trying to tell us. Okay. So, he suggested that the earth is as good as 
what we see based on the uh, the uh, plate boundaries it's like a jigsaw puzzle so in 1912 alfred wigner he was a german meteorologist he proposed uh, that the continents were all together like one piece and named them as pangaea this means all land then drifted apart so this continents or the landmass they drifted apart and reached their present location and the theory was termed as continental drift theory and as i told not many uh, scientists believed what he said and what he wanted to that was of course an hypothesis but he 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 talked based on certain scientific uh, parameters now if you see uh, uh, the globe here why it has been talked as an or said as an jigsaw puzzle it was the boundary here which you see of this is your south america as uh, so this is african plate and this one is south american plate so if you fit this here it will exactly match the corners similarly other plates are also uh, showing some remnants of the outer boundary uh, which matches with uh, one another so he that was what he suggested what that the initially all landmass was uh, on existed here and then it started drifting and so this boundaries are the indicative of the matching boundaries uh, based on which it was been uh, this was the first clue which people got that this probably we are together and the and in the beginning all uh, continents were all were together and that is what they termed as an and pangaea so moving quickly to the other part so this was not enough that is the matching the boundaries uh, between the two plates uh, was not enough to uh, prove that they were uh, once upon a time they were together but of course then the geologists they started looking at more signatures uh, that how we can prove or whether what what has been thought that is the thought process is correct or not okay so more theories came up and then they suggested that the the landmass which were together uh, south of equator were been termed as gondwana land which includes south america africa india here antarctica and australia and then the north of equator was the eurasia and the north american uh, plate so for us the uh, this is uh, the most important one because uh, previously the india was located for far south of equator but now what we see is in in the north so as i told that this was not enough that matching the boundaries that or the uh, the overlaps uh, which were been looked at uh, based on the when the outer margins that was not enough so people started looking at the uh, the researchers started looking at whether if the same environment prevailed in this region then it must show some signatures of the environment and the uh, and the flora and fauna so they started looking for that and even the rocks okay and they found the uh, the similarity between that so right now if you if you for example if you take india here and they try to see that what climate is here whether the same climate is existed existing here the answer is no but when they all were together that is in gondwana land then they were having almost similar climate further they also were able to identify it because uh, during that time also the, you had the glacial movements and all that so this portions uh, 
uh, areas also experience the, uh, the glacial movements or the glacial cover was there. And large amount number of rocks where they indicated that there were glacial movements during that time. But right now, there is no glacier in this portion of, of Indian subcontinent. So, along with the, the rocks and flora and fauna and other signatures like the outer boundary, people started getting convinced about uh, the, the theory of continental drift. So again, the, uh, uh, the, the theory came up uh, which suggested uh, that is the same the continental drift that the supercontinent Pangaea began to break around 225 million years ago and fragmented into numerous continents. So this is the, uh, the time series diagram. If you see, it starts from almost like Permian. Uh, 225 million years ago and then how they separated out and finally what is we are having we see the, the present configuration. So, India is sitting much much further north of the equator, but if you see this one here it was located somewhere south of the equator. And one more thing that uh, the, the researchers have named that the whole landmass for Pangaea, whereas the, uh, the southern one uh, was Gondwana land and they were classified as in Laurasia in the northern side of the equator. And the eastern portion of this landmass was been covered or engulfed by the sea Panthalassa and the uh, sorry the western one and the eastern side was the Tethys Sea. And that is one of the reason why we say that we had a Tethys Sea beef, uh, be, uh, just in the front of or, or maybe the, the oceanic plate in the front of the uh, Indian subcontinent, there is a continental plate and there was a closure of the Tethys Sea when it collided with the Eurasia. So, there is the same one that uh, only uh, connecting or identifying the rock types were not so important were, were not the only uh, points to be uh, to be taken into consideration to prove that they they were together along with the the boundaries here the overlap between the boundaries of the two continent but also they looked at the flora and faunas which clearly indicated that these plates or the continents were together once upon a time that is almost like 225 million years back. Now, this is the present configuration of uh, or, or the distribution of the plates with respect to one another and uh, the prominent features what we see uh, um, along the plate boundaries are important for us to understand that what type of earthquakes, how deep and how big will occur along this plate boundaries and where exactly we are sitting from those plate boundaries. That part is most important and when we get into the details of paleo seismology, so that is again what we are talking on, we are talking of the good global scale tectonics. So, this already I have shown this uh, slide earlier. So, we will quickly move to the, the further one, but in short, uh, these are all the plate boundaries and um, the, the movement or the, the type of the plate boundary either they are subducting or they are, they are passing by uh, with respect to one another or sliding pass by one another has been shown here and we will come to this details as later. Okay. So, we have the collision zone here or subduction zone and then we are having subduction zone here. The major one which was responsible for triggering the 2004 Sumatra Andaman tsunami 
is here and then in Himalayas many large magnitude earthquakes. So, we have more than a dozen of uh, tectonic plates uh, all over the globe with different configuration. As I told in the beginning that for us interior of earth is to some extent important to understand that what exactly is uh, the driving force behind the plate and which unit or the layer of in the interior of earth is responsible for the movement of uh, the plates on, on the on the surface. So, a sthenosphere is partially molten and as we were talking about that there is a continuous heat which has been generated or uh, uh, which keeps generating uh, the convection currents and this convection currents are responsible for driving the plates and bringing the, uh, the hotter material on the surface and taking down the cooler one in form of either the, the lava itself or the plates are subducting below and getting melted again. And this can be uh, well understood if you are having uh, a soap solution uh, and have on with the water and the on a beak and with a beaker on a, or a burner then the the hotter ones will come on the surface cool down and again they will come down okay so this convection currents is similar to what we see uh, here within the asthenosphere and this is responsible for rolling off of the different plates either it is continental plate or your oceanic plate. So, this cycle is repeated over and over to generate uh, which is known as known as convection cell or it is known as convection cell also or the convection flow. So, the same example here. So, where when the soap solution or the the matter cools down, it again goes back or sinks and further heated up and coming up to the surface. And similarly, this uh, process is happening uh, in the asthenosphere also. Now, just to recall your uh, point that because the next slide will show you that how uh, things started moving at around 200 or 225 million years back and what we see the present configuration of the plates in present. Okay. So, there is a cartoon here and you have the, the, the age here which shows then how it started moving apart from the location where it was in the, the south as well as in the north here. And as the, the plates started moving apart, then the center portion started developing what we call the ridges, okay, the oceanic ridge lines. So, these are all spreading centers what we see here and finally, what we see is the uh, for, for us this is important the Indian plate which was located. I will go back if you see slowly I am just moving back the slides. Okay. So, India is located here. So, this was like if you see the clock here, it is 170 million years, then 180, 190 and then 200. So, this was the part of your Gondwana and this is Laurasia and then it started moving, departed from the southern location and finally, it collided with the Eurasian plate. So, if you unfold the globe and try to see the different type of boundaries, then we have like divergent plate boundary where the two plates are moving away from one another, then we are having transform bound margins or the transform plate boundaries where the uh, one plate is sliding past one another as compared to this one. Okay. So, this, uh, this is 
uh, Pacific plate is moving in this direction <coughs> and the, the North American plate is moving in this direction. So these are, and similarly like here, what we are having Caribbean plate and the North American plate. So at many locations, you will have the, uh, the transform plate boundaries and the divergent plate boundaries you will see over here, which we, we were looking at, at where we have the, the African plate uh, um, separated from the South American plate. So this is in the portion of the mid-Atlantic ridge. Okay. These are the splitting center, this one. And this is what we call the mid-Atlantic ridge. And then we have, uh, for us, this part is extremely important. This has been marked as in the subduction zone or the convergent margins, okay, where the plate is subducting below the another one. But here, to some extent now, what we can say that at present we have the collision, which is going on between the, the two plates. So plate motions, we have been talking about that, that all these plates are moving at a particular velocity. And this plate motion is now very well uh, taken into consideration, talking in, uh, like, like in, in terms of the, uh, the hazard related to uh, the, the motion, okay, because more the uh, the plate motion, more the deformation along the plate boundaries and can result into large magnitude earthquakes. So if you look at this is what shows that this is based on the GPS measurements. So this arrow shows the velocity that is up to 10 centimeter per year. And a smaller one has been given as in 5 centimeter just for a reference. So you can look at that this is almost 5, five centimeter per year, the Indian, Indian plate. Okay. And then we have larger ones are here and these portions are all mid oceanic ridges. Okay. And this one what I was showing here is your mid Atlantic ridge. Okay. So please remember this that the, the mid-oceanic ridge which lies between the, the um, African and the South American plate is your mid-Atlantic ridge. So this also helps in understanding that in which direction the plates are moving with respect to one another. For example, if you take here, then it, it clearly shows that the Indian plate is moving in north north east direction, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the upper plate that is the part of the Eurasian plate uh, towards the China side and the Tibetan side is uh, moving towards east or southeast. And if you see here, there are few more which are in the same direction, but then it keep changing. And then the boundary line between this two will show that the the plates are moving in different direction or almost in opposite direction okay. and here too, these two plates are moving in opposite direction. So they are drifting, here what we see is colliding because this plate is going beneath this one, this plate is going beneath this one. So they are colliding and in some locations you will be able to find that they are just passed. So this, this is moving in this direction. So so here the movement is almost like transfers, transform fault system. So as I told that for us it is important to know uh, that what this plate boundaries are telling us that is on global scale then we'll come down to the, uh, the regional and the local scale. But for us it is important whether the earthquake is deep focus earthquake we are going to experience or we are going to experience the intermediate focus earthquake or shallow earthquakes. So if you look at uh, the, the plate boundaries like here what we see is South American plate and the 
Nazca plate, there is an oceanic plate, there is a continental plate. So, what we see the dots here, the purple, then we are having this uh, brown and then we have the red one. So, what we see here is that we have the shallow earthquakes, intermediate earthquakes and deep earthquakes. Okay. So, all three were able to experience in this region. That is the plate boundary that exists between Nazca plate and the South American plate. Similarly, not much of the activity has been seen here, but shallow earthquakes are been seen along this one. And this is this is an important one which I will be showing you a, a clipping of this region, where now this portion has started drifting or fracturing apart from one another. Okay, so there is a there is a chances that not chances that we would say that it will take time to to separate out this portion okay but it has the process already started so this is an extensional uh, um, uh, regime where the two plates are moving up away from one another quickly coming to the portion here we have all mostly shallow earthquakes and the shallow earthquakes are more dangerous as compared to the the deeper ones also, but when and mostly because the, the plates are just sliding past each other. Okay. So, we have the transform plate boundaries here coming to this part of Japan and all that and then coming down to the, so the here also they have mostly the shallow earthquakes, but in Japan we have the deeper ones also. So, shallow, intermediate, deeper all. And same remains the case where we, we talk about here, that is the Sumatra Andaman arc, we have deep or shallow, intermediate and deeper one. Now, I will just put a sketch here, which uh, will uh, make things clear that if you take the, the plate which is going down and there is an overriding plate here. So, what we see is the, the earthquakes here. So, we are having the earthquakes at the deeper part, we are having the earthquakes in the shallower one or the intermediate one. So, these are the deeper one, shallower one and or, or intermediate and the shallower one. Okay. So, this all three you will be able to see when you are having the subducting plate margins. Okay. So, whereas in India, uh, the northern side mostly what we see is the shallow earthquakes because mostly we, we, we are having the collision which is going on between the two plates that is the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. So, for us understanding the plate boundary is important because that will tell us that what type of deformation is going to be uh, seen along these plate boundaries and what type of earthquakes we will experience either there is deep, intermediate or shallow one. So, I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you so much.